So here's Jack looking very cute on his little mat. It's nice to use a stay mat. I call it a stay mat. Um, especially because you've got the slippery hardwood floors and it seems like he's a little bit nervous, might be hard to believe, but a little bit nervous about running around on these hardwood floors. They're slippery. He acts like he really doesn't want to leave the mat. So it makes, it actually makes staying easier to practice in a location like this because you've got the benefit of the the mat being sort of an island to teach him the concept of not moving. So I'm going to start just showing you how to practice this because you will con want to continue to practice. And um, the way to do it is you start with a down or a sit. He's in a nice relaxed down right now. So I'm going to walk in and and start to um, give him the cue for stay. I actually call it wait. It really doesn't matter what you call it as long as you choose a word and stick with it, but I seem to like wait with my own dogs, so I tend to teach them the word wait. So watch my hand signal. I'm gonna come up in front of him, wait. It's a very quick, good. It's a very quick hand signal like a stop sign, like a policeman stop sign, wait. And I say it. The, I say the word pretty firmly, like I mean it. Wait. Now, if you can't see me, but I'm turning. I'm turning and walking away about five feet and coming right back. Good boy. Wait. Doing it again. Walking this way. Good boy. Notice how I put the food right on the ground, um, in between his paws, right on the floor. Wait. That seems to anchor him, anchor them to the ground a little, eas little more easily. Good boy. Now I'm going to try to walk behind him. It's a little harder for most dogs to stay. Wait. When you walk behind them, they don't really like that too much. So watch what I'm going to do to be able to walk around him. I'm going to go wait. And I'm, as I step over him, I'm going to pop a piece of food down so that he really hardly notices that I walked behind him. Wait. And do it again. Good boy. Walk around him. Dogs seem to be nervous about having um, having people walk behind them for whatever reason. Wait. So now I'm going to try to go the other way. Good boy. He's still looking for more. Good boy. Put it right there between his paws. Walk behind him. Seems to be really easy for him. Wait. Good boy! Oh, we got up that time. Down. Relax. That's more like what typically happens is the dog will pop up like that. So that's why I probably should have just kept, um, wait, I should have kept popping the treat down while I walk behind him or over him. Good boy! Wait. Change directions. Good boy. So he's so distracted by the food, he's willing to stay down. Now I'm going to try to release him. Let's go. It's proving to be pretty difficult. <laughs> he doesn't want to get off this mat. Come on, Jack. So it, it, I'd like for him to learn the release word because otherwise there's no end to the staying. It's not clear to him when he is supposed to stay and when he's allowed to get up. Ideally, he should only get up when we tell him to. But it's been proving a little hard to get him to do a release without me having to toss a piece of food off the mat. So I'll demonstrate what I've had to do, and you guys will probably have to do this too. It's not the way I prefer to do it, but it's probably the only way to do it with him. So I'll give him a release. I release him by saying, let's go. Let's go! And then toss the treat so that he at least stands up again. Now, he probably will go right back into the down, but I'd like to get, I'd like to cue him into the down if possible. Down. On the relax. Good. Now I can do another round of weight. Weight. So walk away about six feet. Good boy, come right back. I'm going to show you how to start increasing the time that you can do this. Wait. 
So I'm going to count to, I think I can get away with 10 seconds here. I think. Oh, look, that was nice. He kind of shifted. Good boy! He kind of shifted his weight, but he stayed in the down. I'm going to tell him again. Wait. Good boy. Now I'm walking around him again. That was a little hard for him before. Wait. I'm walking away again. I'm going to stay away for eh, probably a little less than 10 seconds. I don't like to always increase the time because that's not a good idea. You should increase the time. Good boy. You should increase the time gradually, but not always add more time. So for instance, 10 seconds, 7 seconds, wait, still going about 6 feet away. <laughs> Good boy. That was about 6 seconds, wait. Eight seconds. Good boy. Okay, now, and I definitely want to add in a lot of releases so that he understands, um, he understands what that means. Because you want to be able to release your dog out of a, out of a stay or a wait. Let's go. So I just tossed it a little bit off the mat. That seems to work for him. One little piece of food tossed off of the mat. And eventually you won't have to do that. He will understand the word the words on let's go means that he can now move. So I'm going to see if I can get him to do this in a different area and then try to film it.